Are you bored of taking the same GoPro shots every time you go skiing or snowboarding? Are you looking for a way to take better and cooler shots of yourself? Then the Insta360 X3 might be the right choice for you. But how good is the X3 really and how suitable is it for taking shots when skiing or snowboarding? Let's find out. I've tested the X3 several times while skiing over the past few weeks. I'll show you a few shots now, so you can see what's basically possible and then I'll tell you what my experience was and whether I can recommend the X3 to you. As you can see, you can take really cool skiing shots with the X3. I'm really impressed with how good some of these shots turned out. Right off the bat, I can tell you that I had no problems with the X3 in the cold. The camera performed well and there were no unexpected crashes. So what do I like most about the X3 when skiing? And what do I find not so good? Let's start with the positives. What's fantastic of course is that you can take shots with the X3 that wouldn't be possible with a traditional action camera. This is mainly due to two reasons, the reframing and the invisible pole. You have complete freedom to change the framing of each shot in post-processing. Especially when skiing or snowboarding, it's not always possible to get the perfect framing with a traditional action camera. It's cold and you don't want to spend too long trying to figure out the best way to point the camera or how to hold the pole perfectly. If you take a shot with the X3, you can just press record when you're skiing and then pick the optimal shooting angle at home at your leisure. The result is then often just better. You can also take a shot on a descent and then use different angles from that. These two clips, for example, are from the same shot. I just chose a different framing twice and then exported two different clips from the same shot. And that's just a big advantage of a 360 camera. You can make much more varied videos this way than you can with a traditional action camera. I've been making ski videos with a GoPro for several years now and I have to say that I had a lot of fun making these shots with the X3. It was just exciting to finally capture some new angles. Especially if you're a creative type and like to experiment, the X3 will give you a lot of joy. You also don't have to worry about reframing being a complicated process. You simply import your footage, select the right framing with your mouse and export the clip. If the correct framing changes during the course of the video, you also have the option to have the subject tracked automatically. To do this, simply drag a bar around the subject you want to track and the Insta360 app will do the rest automatically. It's really simple, but of course it takes some time. And if you want to use your shot for social media, you can easily choose a vertical format when reframing. For example, I used this shot here for a YouTube Shorts video. But when I shot the clip, I didn't know I was going to create a vertical short out of it. All of these shots also have that special look because you can't see any poles in them. They look like they were taken by another person or maybe even with a drone. But of course that would hardly be doable in this form and at this short distance. As you may know, when you take a 360 shot, the pole is automatically removed from the shot. This is done automatically by the software. You don't have to do any complicated editing steps and you don't need any time to learn how to do it. And as you can see, it works very well with the X3. In most cases, you can hardly tell the camera was attached to a pole or a small stick. Especially if you have to film yourself while skiing, this is a crucial advantage. It gives your footage a completely different quality. To get a good shot when skiing or snowboarding, an action camera should have the widest angle possible. This gives the footage a particularly immersive look. And here too, the X3 has a big advantage over a GoPro or other action cameras. It has an extremely wide field of view, which is even wider than that of a GoPro. I shot a lot of the footage in this video with a pole, but since, as I mentioned, I enjoy experimenting with new shooting angles, I tried different mounts from Insta360. This shot, for example, was taken with a backpack mount. The mount is attached to a backpack similar to a chest mount. A small carbon rod is then attached to the mount. This way, you can capture yourself from behind while skiing or snowboarding without the actual mount being visible. Another advantage, you have both hands free while skiing and don't have to hold a pole. I can definitely recommend the backpack mount. But perhaps my favorite mount is the claw mount from the motorcycle bundle. This can be attached to the ski pole together with a pole. 
Now you can make cool shots from the front. You can also easily attach the X3 to a chest mount or any other GoPro mount with such an adapter. The X3 shoots videos in 5.7K. However, since these are 360 shots, reframing unfortunately also results in a crop of the original shot. This of course results in reduced resolution and lowered image quality. This is of course one of the biggest disadvantages of a 360 camera, but it is in this context that the X3 has a decisive advantage over other 360 cameras such as the GoPro Max or the X2. It can also take conventional videos in 4K in the so-called single lens mode. Here for example I attached the X3 to a chest mount and shot a normal 4K video. So if you want you can also use the X3 like a traditional action camera and shoot high resolution footage with it. And even in this mode the X3 has an extremely wide viewing angle, which is also wider than that of a GoPro. There are a few other things that I basically like about the X3. One of them is the nice big display. If you compare the X3 X3's display to the X2's, you'll notice that the display got a lot bigger. It's a night and day difference. The X3 is also very handy. The vertical format makes it easy to hold and operate. Overall the operation is simple and also suitable for beginners. And then of course there is the Insta360 app. Not only can you control your camera with it, the app also allows you to easily edit your shots. But what I really like about the app is the stories. Stories are basically Insta360's various creative automated edits of your video clips, such as automatically replacing the sky or automatically creating a kind of drone shot from your clip. In the meantime, there are so many of these stories that you can spend quite some time with them. Some of them might be gimmicks, but others look really cool and can significantly enhance your social media presence and make it more exciting. It all sounds great and the X3 seems like the perfect action camera for skiing. It is to some extent. But unfortunately, it also has a few drawbacks compared to a traditional action camera. The biggest disadvantage in my opinion is that, as already mentioned, the resolution is reduced when reframing. Of course, this has a negative impact on the image quality and such a recording cannot necessarily keep up with the recording of a traditional action camera, especially when viewed on a large screen. The image quality in single lens mode is of course better, but it also doesn't fully approach the image quality of a Hero 11 or a Osmo 3. Here for example you can see a comparison between a single lens shot of the X3 and a shot in 5.3K of the Hero 11, whereby the difference is not so noticeable in good lighting conditions. Once Insta360 eliminates that difference on its 360 cameras, it's going to be damned hard for GoPro. The X3 is also not capable of shooting at 120 frames per second, so if you're a fan of slow motion, it's not the optimal camera. It can shoot at 60 frames per second, but you'll have to reduce the resolution even further for that. In single lens mode, for example, you need to reduce the resolution to 3.6K for 60 frames per second, in 360 mode to 4K, although of course you'll still need to reframe the shot here. The vertical form factor is furthermore good for holding the X3 in your hand. It's also well suited to using it on the pole, but it's rather less suitable for other mounts, such as the helmet mount. The camera makes itself a bit more noticeable on the helmet than a traditional action camera due to its particular form factor. But this is not a big problem for me personally, because I'm not a big fan of the helmet mount anyway. So if you're faced with the decision of whether to get a traditional action camera like a GoPro or the Osmo 3 or the X3, then you should ask yourself first and foremost whether the absolute best possible image quality is crucial to you or the ability to capture more interesting, better and creative shooting angles while removing the poles from the image. Many now use their footage exclusively for social media or view it primarily on their smartphone. In both cases, the absolute best image quality isn't really critical, but of course only everyone can decide that for themselves. Where does the X3 stand in comparison to the X2? Would the X2 perhaps be an interesting alternative to save yourself some money? The X3 and X2 have more or less the same body. Although, as already mentioned, the X3 has a much larger display. This is already a decisive advantage because the display of the X2 is really small. The X3 also has a new sensor that is not only larger but also has more megapixels. This leads to an overall better performance in low light. Although I would like to add that this type of camera is basically rather less suitable for shooting in low light conditions. Also, unlike the X3, the X2 does not allow shooting in 4K in single lens mode. Time-lapse recordings can even be made in 8 K with the X3. This is not possible with the X2. In contrast to the X2, the X3 also offers additional features, such as the Mi mode, where the reframing is automatic and the camera automatically keeps you in the center of the shot. 
This is of course great for vlogging. The X3 also has a number of advantages over the GoPro Max. It allows for higher resolution, especially in single lens mode. It has a larger sensor, which of course allows for better image quality. It also offers significantly more features. And that doesn't even include the many editing options of the Insta360 app. A detailed comparison with the GoPro Max will follow soon. In summary, I can say that the X3 is a lot of fun and very well suited for skiing. Especially if you want to film yourself, you will probably get the more interesting shots with the X3 than with another action camera. You can find links to the X3 and the mentioned accessories in the video description. You should check them out, because right now there are very interesting offers. And you can also find a more detailed comparison between the X3 and the more traditional action camera like the Hero 11 on my channel. Check it out if you're interested in the topic. And give me a like as feedback if this video was interesting to you. There will be more videos on the X3. So stay tuned and see you next time.